1504, 12 years after Columbus landed here, this man arrives, Hernán Cortés de Monroy y Pizarro, 18 years old, the beginning of one of history's most extraordinary and catastrophic tales of conquest. 15 years later, in 1519, Cortés is mayor of the city of Havana, but chafing for adventure, glory, gold, and in defiance of the governor of Cuba, his boss, he escapes with 15 ships, 600 men, and 13 horses. First landfall in Mexico, the Yucatan, where he finds the sine qua non of this story, a young Aztec woman known to history as La Malinche. She becomes his mistress and a translator, with her at his side, and a Spanish priest, Geronimo de Aguilar, who speaks her language. The stage is set for the leveling, the total destruction of the island the city of Tenochtitlan, now Mexico City, but also with Cortés Bernal Díaz del Castillo, one of his lieutenants, it is from his words and those of Cortés that we get their side of the story here rendered for us by two actors. First up, however, a base of operations. On East Week, no less, they land at what is now Veracruz, Cortés's city, the city of the True Cross. And it was from here in 2019, in a rented Volkswagen, alone, with my 75-year-old legs, twice the age of either Cortés or Diaz, that I embarked upon the path of conquest, visiting nearly all the towns and cities there encountered, La Antigua, Zempoala, Kiawitzlan, Jalapa, Tlaxcala, Cholula, and the ruggedly beautiful high mountain pass, El Paso de Cortés, between two volcanoes. And it was from here that I descended with Cortés and company, separated by some 500 years, into the valley of Mexico, to an elevated causeway, leading straight into Tenochtitlan, the imperial city, and where, on November 8th of 1519, the all-powerful, gracious, exceedingly polite Moctezuma greets his visitors. Nine months later, he would be dead, by the hand of, as some would claim, Hernán Cortés de Monroy y Pizarro himself. Hey, hey, hey.